Sending telescopes and probes to space is incredibly rewarding. It allows us to escape the turbulent atmosphere that makes images taken from the ground blurry, and it gives us an amazingly clear view of the universe. It's also really difficult, and getting billion-dollar high-tech observatories into orbits that can be millions of miles away is incredibly hard. The recent launch of the Euclid Space Telescope went really well, but that's not to say that everything has been perfect with the telescope so far. In this video, we'll talk about the issues that the observatory has faced since launch, some of them pretty major, and how they have been overcome to keep this ambitious mission on track. The goal of the Euclid Space Telescope is to map over a billion galaxies and make the largest 3D map of the universe that we've ever made. Seeing how galaxy properties and the clustering and populations of galaxies changes over time will teach us more about the mysterious dark matter and dark energy that we think make up the majority of the universe. The thing is, these space missions are very complicated. From designing and building an observatory that's sensitive and nimble enough to detect everything we need it to, to launching it to space and operating it smoothly from Earth, there is a lot that can go wrong. And go wrong, they sure have. Launch aboard a Falcon 9 rocket went pretty perfectly, and the telescope arrived at Lagrange Point 2 as expected, about a month after launch. The instruments on board all turned on correctly, and the telescope was tilted slightly towards the sun to evaporate any remaining ice away, and the commissioning process began. This involves making sure that all of the instruments are working correctly, and that we can use the telescope as we expected before launch. While we did see the release of some of the first commissioning images showing the telescope was functioning and in focus, even at this stage, problems were becoming apparent with Euclid. There were three, yeah, three main issues that have been highlighted by ESA, and we'll go through them one at a time right here. Surprisingly, two of these problems come from something pretty nearby, the sun. Obviously, we knew about the sun before launch, and we took many, many steps to remove the problems that it can cause. But as they say, nature always finds a way. The first problem is an increasing number of solar farts, I mean, flares. These are sudden eruptions of radiation and particles from the surface of the sun. And in particular, many x-rays are ejected during these flares. Now, Euclid isn't meant to be an X-ray telescope. Its two instruments are designed to detect visible light and infrared light. But these high-energy X-rays can still impact the pixels on our detectors. While Euclid does have shielding in place to protect it from low-energy protons that can damage the detectors, it appears that at some angles, X-rays from solar flares can sneak through gaps in the solar panels and reach the detectors, meaning that over time, these X-rays can damage those detectors and eventually they will start to degrade. It can spoil images as they're taken, but the bigger problem is the degradation of the detectors over time as these high-energy X-rays hit them. It's currently predicted that over its mission, Euclid could lose about 3% of its data if this problem is left untackled. To make things worse, in the next year or two, we're approaching maximum solar activity in the solar cycle. So this means there's an increasing number of flares as well. Now, we didn't know about the solar maximum before we launched, but they're already more frequent and higher energy than we expected, even at this maximum. That maximum would have had to happen at some point during the mission, because of how long it is, regardless of when we launched. And I think due to the costs of delaying, there would be no good way to avoid this. To mitigate, if we know of a flare coming, we can put the telescope in its safest orientation and turn off any at-risk instruments. Other than that, I don't know of much else that we can do to mitigate this, as we can't send up a new X-ray shielding. But we can discount any affected pixels from future analysis if we know where they are. In fact, it's actually even possible for the telescope to X-ray itself, and calculate the energy of solar flares during these events. So it could even do X-ray science kind of by accident. But more about that another day. The second problem that the sun causes is known as stray light. It's exactly what it sounds like light getting into places we don't want it. In this case, light from the sun is finding its way into the detectors. We really don't want this. In order to detect faint galaxies out in space, we need to remove all sources of unwanted light, including that from the sun, earth, and moon. The big sun shield here should block all of that light and protect the spacecraft. It's essentially always got its back to the sun. The issue is a small thruster bracket on the side of Euclid that lies outside the shadow of the sun shield. It's reflecting enough light behind the sunshield and towards the visible light detector, called VIS, to be a problem. 
Viz is protected by many layers of insulation, but enough light is getting through that insulation to show up in images when the telescope is pointed at certain angles relative to the sun. I should be clear that most observations are not affected, but at some angles about 10% of observations have stray light showing up in them. You can see a comparison here of a few different angles, which tell us which way the telescope is pointing. In the left hand image, there's a pretty large amount of stray light ruining our image of space. But as we move to the right, the images get darker and darker meaning they're better and better. Again, before launch, we did know that this thruster bracket would be outside the sunshield shadow, but we thought that the insulation and shield would be enough to protect us from stray light. Sadly, it does seem to still be a problem. I'm not sure exactly what's gone wrong for it to still be happening, but similar problems have affected other telescopes, including ESA's Gaia mission in the past. Since this is, again, really a hardware issue, there isn't much we can do from here. What has been done is redesign and optimize the Euclid survey to avoid pointing the telescope at the angles that let in too much of this stray light, thus removing most of the problem. It won't affect the telescope's ability to take the images we require or do the science it was sent up to do. So this problem can be filed under annoying, but not critical. This brings us to problem three. Probably the biggest one of them all. Basically, we couldn't point the telescope very well and it kept moving during the exposures it was taking. To get good images of faint, distant galaxies, we need to take images for reasonably long periods of time, collecting more and more light. It's like staring up at the night sky. The longer you stare, the more stars you begin to see as your eyes collect more and more light, allowing you to see fainter and fainter stars. Euclid is doing that, but for galaxies that are up to billions of light years away. Essentially, every 75 minutes for its six year mission, Euclid will change its precise position, meaning it will point more than 40,000 times. If the telescope moves while taking these long exposure images, we end up with a blurry image that is no good to us. To know where it's pointing, Euclid uses its Fine Guidance Sensor, or FGS. Other telescopes like JWST and Gaia use similar systems, but the one on Euclid is a brand new design. The guidance systems work by picking out known stars and star patterns and using them as guides to know where they're looking. The Euclid FGS uses a catalog of stars made by the Gaia mission for this and uses them to navigate and stay locked onto targets. If the star patterns it can see are still, then we know it's good. The problem was this was not working well. One issue was the imager not finding enough faint stars that it should be detecting, meaning it wasn't able to recognize star patterns that it needed to navigate. The other issue was caused by cosmic rays, those pesky things, high energy particles hitting the detectors. These can show up as points of light or streaks across the image, and the fine guidance system was mistaking them for stars, again meaning that it was always seeing patterns that it didn't recognize because they had too many stars. At some points, these fake stars from cosmic rays even outnumbered the real stars that the FGS could see. All of this meant that sometimes the telescope failed to point where it should be, and sometimes it would lose lock in the middle of taking one of these images, and just end up roaming around trying to regain this lock. This results in some funky images like this one, where stars move across the image in comical lasso shapes as the telescope moves around trying to find the patterns of stars that it needs to stay still and point in the right direction. Luckily, these FGS problems are all software based, so after a lot of hard work, we could beam an update up to Euclid and correct the issues. I don't know the details of how this update solved the problems, but testing so far suggests that it has done the job and the telescope is now much more stable and able to lock onto star patterns a lot better. On the whole, things are very much back on track and looking good for Euclid, even if things are delayed by six weeks or so due to solving these issues. Performance verification is now ongoing for the telescope, and thanks to the hard work of everyone involved, science and surveying the universe will soon be in full swing. Leave me any Euclidean questions you have down below and thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.